Hey, this is Jason Molesky. Let's take a look at interpreting a confidence interval. Two weeks before a presidential election, a polling organization asked a random sample of registered voters the following question. If the presidential election were held today, would you vote for candidate A or for candidate B? Now, based on this poll, the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion who favor candidate A is 0.48 to 0.54. Let's start by interpreting the confidence interval, 0.48 to 0.54. We can say that we are 95% confident that the interval from 0.48 to 0.54 captures the true proportion of all registered voters who favor candidate A in the election. Now there are a few important things to note when interpreting the confidence interval. We always want to say our level of confidence. We want to indicate what that interval is, and we want to make sure we're noting that we're um, capturing the true proportion or the true parameter that we're interested in. In this case, what's the point estimate that was used to create the interval? And what's the margin of error? Well, recall a confidence interval has the form point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. Since this interval goes from 0.48 to 0.54, we can say that the point estimate is at the midpoint of the interval, in this case 0.51. Then the margin of error would give the distance from that point estimate to either end of the interval, or in this case 0.03. A quick way to find the margin of error is to simply subtract maximum minus minimum on your interval and divide by 2. Now based on this poll, a political reporter claims the majority of registered voters favor candidate A. Let's use the confidence interval to evaluate that claim. Any value from 0.48 to 0.54 is a plausible value for the population proportion P that favors candidate A. Now because there are plausible values of P less than 0.50, the confidence interval does not give uh, convincing evidence to support the reporter's claim that a majority, or more than 50%, of registered voters favor candidate A. For some additional practice in interpreting a confidence interval, try exercise 9.